Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. Whether you're in the space here joining us and or if you're just watching live stream or inshallah if you watch this in the future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati ama'alina man yadihillahu falamudhillalahu وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْهُ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد all praise be to Allah from the uh, from whom we seek help and forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one, having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is Allah's servant and messenger. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. O oh, humanity, be mindful of your creator who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate. And through both, Allah spread countless people. And be mindful of Allah in whose name you appeal to one another and honor your ties of kinship. Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. And O oh, ye who believe, be mindful of Allah and say what is right. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlul uqdatil min lisani yafqahu qawli. So bismillah, we go ahead and begin today. And uh, just give me one moment here. And if everyone wouldn't just might just uh, wouldn't mind just muting their mics, that way we don't have any feedback uh, here. Jazakallah khair. So as you might have known, this uh, you know, we're, we're in the month of Ramadan. We're in the month of Ramadan. We're actually almost now, uh, not just halfway, we're now two thirds almost through this blessed month. And one thing that I've been doing for Ramadan, just in terms of programming, and you, some of you may be, have had, had, had attended these sessions, is the 99 Names of Allah sessions. The reason for doing these sessions, apart from the fact that we are using this month as a way to reconnect with Allah, but also because our fasting is intricately connected with coming to know Allah. And we'll cover that in a bit, but just a little bit of background on the 99 name sessions in case you aren't familiar. We cover about three names a day, three to four names, inshallah. And we work on reworking and expanding our traditional understanding of Allah. Many of us, including myself, first and foremost, were raised coming to know Allah from a, uh, from a proxy of just fear, from a uh, lens of fear, from a lens of guilt, a lens of shame, and a lot of negative things to where we didn't really feel connected to Allah. We felt connected to Allah in a way that Allah was uh, over us like a master is to a slave, like having very strong language in which we can associate, not really relate to Allah as intimately as actually is intended. And so we see the names of Allah, when we go through the names of Allah, when we go to Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus, and we go down the line, we go through each of these names, and we go through each of them, we see them not just as names of Allah, or just names on a poster that we recognize. These are names that are a means of connection. They are reminders, and they are sources of healing from Allah not barriers, not just like Allah is that much more separated. These names, on the other hand, are the inverse. They show us how much closer we are and how much closer Allah is to us than we previously would have given credit. 
So we know that Allah created this world. Allah created the creation and imbued his ruh into humanity, imbued his divine spirit, these divine sparks, whatever you may call it, into the creation. And so the creation manifests and the creation attests to the uh, divine creator. It reflects that and it gives a sign back showing us the, the divine and the signature of Allah upon this world. And so we see the divine in the world around us when we in the divine stamp, the divine signature, whatever you want to call it, we see that in the world around us when we come to know Allah, when we come to know the diversity of which Allah is, of just the attributes, the names, we see this. And no, we come to then know ourselves and we come to know Allah. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that we uh, oftentimes mention in these sessions that the one who knows themselves comes to know their Lord. And the flip side is so true as well. And the Quran tells us that if my servant asks about me, tell them I am near. It's very interesting what Allah says in response to this. If my servant asks about me, tell them I am near, I am close. There's an innate connection that we have to the divine. It's, 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 it's been something that uh, we were born with, something that we were created with is that divine connection. And as I mentioned, it's especially important for us in Ramadan and especially during fasting. You might be like, what? Like, what, what does fasting have to do with being aware of Allah's attributes or being aware of Allah's names or any of these things? What, what does that got to do with it? So in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, oh, ye who believe fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may develop God consciousness and righteousness. It says, la'allakum tattakun. The root of taqun is the same as taqwa. When I was growing up, oftentimes I'd be told that taqwa is fear. Fear Allah. Just have fear of Allah. Just be afraid of Allah because Allah would do this if you do bad. Just constantly. That's, that's the only translation I would get. That's the only translation we'd be fed is that that's all that it is. But there's so many more rich meanings when you look at the root of this word. When you look at the root of this word, you find out it's not just fear. It's protection. It's safety. It's safeguarding, it's awareness, it's mindfulness, it's consciousness. It's a consciousness that you recognize that I am uh, aware of Allah, I'm aware of God, and as a result, I will be a better person. So when we say in the Quran, it says fasting is prescribed for you that you may develop God consciousness, that you may become righteousness, that you, you may become righteous, that, may, that you may develop righteousness, all these things, it's a process. It acknowledges that it's a process, but it's something that is not just so that you might fear Allah. No, you are doing this fasting as a way to come closer to Allah, as a way to improve that divine connection, but also to transform yourself. So Ramadan, we uh, know, is often marked by fasting. When we describe it to other people or our coworkers, if they're non-Muslim or whoever they might be, oftentimes the connotation we give to them is Ramadan is just about fasting. It's just about fasting. It's not until someone comes into the faith that they see how much more there actually is to the cherry that is fasting. Fasting is, of course, the key. But we have a powerful hadith from the Prophet ﷺ that tells us that some of us will fast and all we'll get from it is hunger and thirst. Some of us will go through Ramadan, 30 days of fasting, 29 days of fasting, whatever it might be. Um, if, if, you know, if, if you're not able to fast all the days, most of the days that are fasting there, but you come away with, these with hunger and thirst. You come away from these with hunger and thirst, and that's all that you get. So we lift up that uh, this is something that, so, that the Prophet acknowledged. This is something the Prophet acknowledged because he knew we would sometimes get lost in the focus of a month like Ramadan or in fasting, we just think about ourselves and our hunger. But instead this time when we take away that spirit, that, uh, that nourishment, that physical nourishment, we open our eyes to the spiritual nourishment, the spiritual uh, feeding that we get when we're in Ramadan. We might be physically hungry, but we should come out spiritually filled and satisfied and satiated when we think about what Ramadan is. The purpose of Ramadan, as we've discussed time and time and time again, is not to drop a monster stat sheet, is not to draw, uh, draw up the spreadsheets and fill it with all these different stats. You can do that. That's great. But the purpose of Ramadan is at its core 
for you to become conscious of Allah, for you to become better, for your, you to develop a process to transform. So Ramadan is not just about recording all these great deeds and whatnot, that's, that's a good part of it, but what are those deeds? What do they mean if they stop on the 30th of Ramadan and you relapse back to who you were before? What is the significance of that? It's just you have one month that you cash out and then everything else is back to normal. No, you want Ramadan is a time that comes from a root of burning, a root of really just smoldering. And when we think about iron and metal being purified, they're purified in hot furnaces, burning furnaces in which the impurities are taken out. Ramadan is a challenge for us. It's, of course, a physical challenge, but it has spiritual fruits and benefits that we take from it. So when we look at this, that purpose is to transform, that purpose is to change, but it's also to become more aware of not just ourselves, not just the fact that, hey, we're hungry or, hey, this is what we're there, but to become more aware of our surroundings, to become more aware as a result then of Allah. We come to know others. We come to know others. We come to know ourselves and vice versa. We come to know ourselves. We come to know others a little bit better. And when we come to know others, we come to see the divine signature in the world and when we come to see the divine signature in the world, we see it imprinted in so many of the people and creation around us. It's, it goes any different way, which way you want to mix it up. But the main point being when you are mindful, when you are leading this world with an open heart, open eyes, open ears, you receive and you begin to know. And when you, when you begin to know, you become closer to the one who is al-alim, the one who knows all, the one who is all-knowing. And then you come closer to the creator. And we mentioned this in the morning session today uh, when we were co covering some of the names. One of them was Al-Waqil. And how knowing Allah, knowing Allah through one of the attributes, any one of the attributes, is not just simply attesting that, oh yeah, you know, this is Allah, of course, and Allah is all-powerful, or Allah is all-seeing, Allah is all that. Yeah, I, I know that, that's, that's there. But it's actually to internalize it, to come to know it, but also to then reflect it. You know that Allah is all seeing. You know that Allah is all merciful. You know that Allah is all loving. Where are those attributes in you? Of course, you can't be, you know, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus. You can't be all these attributes. You can't, those, that's, that's for Allah. But you can express these. You can express parts of these. You can express those sparks that you've been created with. Because when you were created by Allah, you were created with these divine sparks. They're there. But what are we, what are we expressing? The divine names then, in a sense. Humanity and the world and creation as a whole have been created within that framework, within these divine names, and so many more that we don't know, so many more that we may know of that are not listed. And these divine sparks are embedded in throughout creation. It doesn't just have to be a human being. It can be creation anywhere across this world, anywhere across the heavens and the celestial bodies, and so far through the universe. But each of them manifest in some way, shape, or form in the world around us, in the creation around us, and oftentimes in ourselves. What we do with these divine name sessions, what we do with our divine with the, with the, our divine name reflections, what we do with these divine names is not just memorize them, commit them to memory and say, hey, I know the divine names of Allah, but do you really know them? Because they have a purpose of not just being memorized. They have a purpose of not just being memorized, but purpose of being known. Because when you know them, you begin to internalize them. When you begin to internalize them, you begin to operate completely differently within your framework, within the world around you and to yourself. You, you become a transformed person when you come to know these names, not come to memorize them just as is. And so when we see these things in, in, in the world, they serve as reminders. They serve as reminders pointing back. So the names, when we know them, we come to see how, how like just abundant they are embedded in the world around us. And when we come to know the people, we come to know these qualities, but then we learn about Allah and we see the connection. So it goes either way. And when we see these things in the world, we see love, we see mercy, we see compassion, we see justice, we see the flip of it as well. We see the opposite as well. We see that it comes from Allah and we see what Allah wants. What is Allah? And that way we can see what doesn't fit in with the divine image, what doesn't fit in with uh, Allah's order, what does not fit in with Allah's teaching. We begin to then see people not just as ordinary folks, but sacred, sacred reminders of the divine. And for better or for worse, something redeemable. And most importantly, these names remind us from what and by whom and where we were created and that our return is to Allah. The Quran says in Surah Al-Fajr, irji, it's a command, irji, return. You can't return to somewhere that you haven't gone to before, as Dr. Omid Safi has lifted up. 
you can't go back to a place you haven't come from. So we know that our our origination, our source, our, uh, our, our place of origin is divine. Our place of origin comes from Allah. Allah created us, created us, whatever you think that might look like, or whatever garden or place you think that looks like, Allah created us and Allah sent us out. But our return is there and our command to return is there. We, we go back here. I, I share this brief story here and in, in, as we close the first part of this khutbah that I had the pleasure of performing a interfaith nikah over a couple of weeks back or so. And alhamdulillah, we, we, the, the story that, that, that was given there is essentially how life is like a highway. Life is like a highway, but its starting point and its end destination are the exact same. Those starting points for us are Allah and the destination is Allah. We come from Allah and to Allah we return. We say this at moments when we lose something. We say this at moments when we lose someone. We remember from Allah we come and to Allah we return. But sometimes we don't internalize that it's a full cycle. We come from one place, we return to another place. And these names, these divine names are signs. When you're driving on I-35, when you're driving on any highway, you'll see a host of signs. You'll see signs that tell you what cities are up ahead. You'll see signs that tell you how fast to go. We'll see signs that say what lane is closed, what thing to avoid, any of these different types of signs. And all of these names function as different kinds of signs. These names tell us when we can go faster, when we can slow down, when we can maybe expect uh, a detour, when we can be aware. So these names help us be cognizant, be mindful, not just of where we are. Because when we see the signs, we have relatively a good idea of where we are, but we have an idea of how far our destination is, or that the fact that we're still on the path to our destination. And this highway, as much as we'd like it to be, is not an empty one. It is one that has so many other people along it, so many other things along it that are also on this path. And when we take these signs, when we follow these signs, we are more mindful of the people around us who are also on that journey of return. We are mindful of the different vehicles that they're in, the different speeds they're traveling, whatever it may be, we take care to be cautious of that. If someone's stuck on the side of the road, if someone's car breaks down, we take the initiative to help them in this path. So when we look at these names, these names are signs. And when we think about internalize these names, the people become signs and vice versa, that this, this world becomes a journey, this life becomes a highway, and we internalize these things. And so may these names be reminders for us. May they be not only a reminder of where we came from, but how to get there, how to get to our destination, as well as how to get everybody else there. It's not just about us. It's about everybody else and how can we be responsible people taking everyone forward. So the connection we want to see is in the reconnection. And inshallah. So may Allah allow us to internalize this. May Allah allow us to open our eyes to these signs. And we'll discuss this in conclusion in the second part. I say these words of mine and I ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. My thanks and gratitude be to Allah, the Lord of all humanity, and I ask Allah to bless and bestow peace on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So friends, we are on the highway of life. How we drive affects how we get to that destination and others on the road and other travelers and as well as ourselves. And we are, been, we are given signs. We are given these landmarks. We are given these, these things that are just telling us how to get to the destination, but also how to properly be wherever we are, how to take rest, how to properly go about here. And the signage points us to Allah. The signage points us to Allah, but also points back to ourselves. When we see the signage, it tells us not just about the world around us, but it tells us about that relation we have to Allah. And so as we close out Ramadan, we remind ourselves why we fast. We don't fast so that we can hit our weight loss goals. We don't fast so that we might uh, just save on some uh, grocery budget for the month. We don't fast for any of these trivial reasons. We fast so that we may become more mindful of Allah. It's not that we will become mindful of Allah entirely in its perfect form in Ramadan. It's that we will begin that process. We will develop and we will grow to become that, uh, that, that uh, conscious of there. So I'm sorry, if, you're, if your mic is unmuted, if you don't mind just uh, muting that, please. So we, we look at Ramadan when we're going and we remind ourselves why we exist. We remind ourselves why we're here in the first place. 
And so as we go through this time, we remind ourselves that our fasting is that connection. Our fasting, every time we break that fast with a date, every time we hold that fast with a glass of water or whatever it may be, that we remember that we are doing this not for any worldly purpose. We're doing this so that we may become closer to Allah and that we may be more aware of Allah. When we're more aware of Allah, we're more aware of the creation. When we're more aware of the creation, we're more aware of ourselves. And the Prophet of course said, the one who knows himself knows their creator. So again, may these names, may these divine signs, may the people around us, may the creation around us that reflect these signs, that are created in these same signs, may they, may these names, all of these things, be those signages for us in our road. Be that signage for us as we're driving in the light, in the journey of life. May it be how a direction for how we get to our destination, but also reminding us where we are and how to properly be where we are as well as how we can take everyone to that destination. Ultimately, not to just be connected to Allah and to establish it as if it's a first time thing, but to be reconnected, to fulfill that irji, to fulfill that return that we started from Allah and we come back to Allah and these names and these attributes and these people and these creation and everything around us is a sign that points us how to get back to our destination, inshallah. عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمر بالأدل والإسان ويتعذ القرباء وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم مدعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر O servants of Allah may Allah be merciful to you Verily Allah commands you to act with justice to confer benefits upon each other and to do good to one another as uh, one does to one's kindred and forbids evil which pertains to our own selves and evils which affect others and prohibits any kind of unlawful revolt or rebel. And he warns you, Allah warns you against being unmindful. Allah warns you against being unmindful, that you remember Allah. Allah too will remember you. Call upon Allah and Allah will make a response to your call. And verily, divine remembrance is the highest virtue. We ask Allah in closing here with our du'as that Allah to be al-basir and as-samir, the divine names that for us to help us keep our eyes and our ears open and be mindful of and aware of Allah in the world around us as well as the people that help us get closer to Allah. We ask Allah to be as-sabur, al-wakil and al-hakam and al-adl for patience, witness, justice for those who are murdered, marginalized, dehumanized by systems of power and oppressive forces. We ask Allah to be ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, bestowing upon us mercy and yet caring for us and nurturing us as we travel through this journey of life, along this highway of life to our arrival in the destination in the hereafter. We ask Allah to be al-Afu for forgiveness for any of our shortcomings before this day and the days to come. We ask Allah to be al-wadud, to engender a sense of love for one another, for our faith, for all creation in our hearts. A love that encompasses us like the love that Allah gives that encompasses all of creation. And we ask Allah to be as-salam, al-adl, for peace and justice to prevail. And Allah for, uh, for Allah to be a rauf to comfort the oppressed of the world and enable us to be their comforters. And we ask Allah to be a rafi and a shafi for alleviating and healing all those who might be suffering the effects of this pandemic physically, mentally, economically, and to help us be facilitators of this alleviation. And lastly, we ask Allah to allow our experiences, setbacks, and any shortcomings be a source of healing, a source of growth, and most importantly, a source of transformation, especially in this Ramadan, that we leave this Juma and that we leave this Ramadan better than we had entered it, inshallah. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim. O oh Allah, accept this service from us, for thou art all hearing, all knowing. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik. Allahumma Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Zakla khair brothers and sisters, we have uh, just a few announcements uh, inshallah that we'll be making and uh, concerning what, what's going, uh, upcoming here. But Zakla khair for coming to the space and coming to Jummah, wherever you may be coming from.
but just a few reminders for you all here, as you may have noticed or not, and if you found out today, Ramadan is happening. So uh, Ramadan Mubarak, in case you haven't figured it out. But uh, Alhamdulillah, Muslim Space has been doing a lot during Ramadan. Uh, we've been we've been packing uh, a, a good punch in, and every day we have some type of events that are coming on. In the mornings, we have the 99 names of Allah session. So if this khutbah resonated with you, if the attributes of Allah resonated with you, you're welcome to join the space. We meet every day after Fajr at 5.45 a.m., and so you're welcome to join there. More details um, are provided on our website and our Muslim Space uh, website, muslimspace.org slash Ramadan. And all of our Ramadan information is there. Every night we have uh, a nightly Quran recitation at 7.15. So you can click to watch live at the, the Muslim Space Ramadan page. This, sun, uh, this Saturday, we have a really special halakha planned, a halakha featuring Dr. Kamila Mukmin Rashad, um, founder of the Black Muslim COVID Coalition, talking about white supremacy, racism, spirituality, and dignity as part of the uh, Ramadan halakha series on human dignity here at Muslim Space. And that'll be at four o'clock. So more information again on that and all these things at the Ramadan page. Apart from that, we have weekly events that are going on for kids. We have uh, Ramadan story time, which happens every Saturday at 11 a.m. And we have Ramadan arts and crafts, which happens every Sunday at 2.30. Um, and we have a Ramadan for kids page. If you go to the website, there's a Ramadan for kids as well as a Ramadan uh, wellness series. So there's, there's meditation, there's healing attunement and meditation, yoga series. All these can be found on the Ramadan page. And inshallah, the last thing is our uh, Zakat al-Fitr uh, distribution. So... Uh, when you go to the website, you'll be you'll you'll see a tag that says uh, anytime you go, it'll have uh, time for pay, paying your zakat. So uh, Muslim Space is doing a zakat drive and is also doing a zakat distribution. So please check that out to find out more information. And lastly, uh, please uh, do uh, keep in mind we have a graduation celebration that will be coming up for all our high school seniors and families on Sunday, May 30th. So mark your calendar, Sunday, May 30th, 6 p.m. Um, we uh, will be holding it at the Palmer Village Townhomes Amenity Center, but more details uh, will be on the website. So be sure to follow along. And of course, chaplaincy hours are available every uh, by appointment as well as every Thursday. So feel, feel free to touch base with us there. But inshallah, we look forward to, to seeing you all. And I hope you have a blessed Jummah and blessed weekend, inshallah.